Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining me. This is Game God Fluent bringing you episode one of a new LP. Um, we are going to be playing a game that is sort of like a turn based CRPG, but also sort of a visual novel uh, combination. I know about this game from quite a few years ago when it came out, and uh, I was on the RPG Watch forums at the time, and some people were playing it and saying it was really cool, and um, I actually played it for a few minutes and thought, wow, this is really cool, but then I put it down all those years ago and never returned, and I was thinking about games, not really even thinking about games to play, but uh, I happened to be looking through my Steam game list for something, installing another game, and I saw it in my game list, and I said, you know what, let me install that. And uh, I turned it on here for a few minutes, and I said, oh yeah, this is exactly what I want right now. So I think to kind of switch things up a bit, we're going to be playing uh, Lauren the Amazon Princess. So again, I don't know a ton about the game, just that it sort of mixes visual novel with turn-based combat and CRPG stuff. And... um yeah, we're going to check this out and see how... I don't know how long we'll go with it in the first batch of recordings. But, um... You know, we will play some of it. That is for sure. So we'll hit play here and... Expansion Castle of Inmar activated. Game full version activated. Let's very quickly check the preferences. Um... Full screen, text speed, transitions. Okay, I guess that's about it. Uh, let's go ahead and start the game. Select your play style. Um, so the tactics style, you start with five known skills instead of one. You gain a new skill point every three levels instead of two. And characters gain 20% less stamina spell points each level up instead of normal. This is for players who want to start with many known skills to try combos and are willing to sacrifice level up rewards and customization. I definitely don't want to sacrifice either of those. So we're going to play for players who want to discover each new skill gradually and be rewarded often for level up, allowing more customization. And all characters always gain three attributes points every level, and the maximum level is 30. So let's hit standard and get into it. I'm going to be doing a lot of reading. Inside the monastery, there is only one lit room at this late hour. Just enough light to see the empty pages of a thick book. A hooded monk leans over the desk inside with a quill in hand. I am the monk. I am here to write a tale so epic that I cannot sleep until it is told. So here I write the tale of the Amazon princess, Lauren. I start this tale from the very beginning, back in a time when the world was blissfully unaware of the turmoil to come. We begin high in the mountains, deep in a mighty fortress. A sword slices the head of a training dummy clean off and it falls in pieces around the feet of a tall, raven-haired woman. Every morning, the servants would mend the training equipment so that it may be destroyed again by their princess's hand during the next training session. One sword was not enough for this fierce warrior. No, she considered a shield dead weight and an empty hand a death wish. Princess Lauren would fight only with a sword in each hand. Where are the other dummies? There are none left, my grace. She was displeased to learn that her training would end so early today. She crossed her arms and stared down her attending servants. Then perhaps one of you should fetch a sword. The slaves gulped in unison at, after having witnessed what damage their princess could do. But before anyone could move, the piercing cry of a griffin fell from the skies. Just then, a messenger ran into the training grounds, panting for breath. P Princess Lauren, the captain, she has returned. Alone, your majesty. Lauren broke into a run. She ran as fast as she could to the main square inside the citadel. The Amazon scouts had landed with their griffins just as she arrived. The captain of the guards, Brisa, looked extremely grave as she approached her. Lauren knew instantly that the news the scouts carried would not be a routine report. Your Majesty, tell me. A scout stepped forward and placed a hand over her heart in salute. 
Queen Karen has been lost. Lauren's face paled. She disappeared into the night. As of now, we do not know what happened to her. There's not a trace? We searched high and low, your majesty. She is not in Amazon territory. Then we have no choice in this matter. With the queen lost, Princess Lauren must become our new queen. No, my mother is still alive and still the queen. She is not dead. You did not find her body. Searching for her must be our top priority. Your Highness, you know that it is against law to leave the Citadel. Your mother's fate is too uncertain. That is precisely why we must try to find her. I will search for her myself if I have to. Her hard glare challenged anyone to say otherwise. New quest, find Queen Karen. Find the missing Amazon Queen. Reward 1000 XP. You just discovered your first quest. Quests give large experience point rewards once completed. To view the quest screen, use the Q key or click the icon that appeared at the top right of the screen. Clicking that icon will also let you access the party management screen. In the party management, management screen, you can also review and equip each character, check the available skills, manage the party inventory, and of course, the quest screen. Your Highness, Brisa looked conflicted. Your mother appointed me as the enforcer of Amazon law, and I must decree, if you leave the Citadel, you forfeit all support from the Amazons. Your mother appointed me as the enforcer... Hmm? What? When you abandon the Citadel, you abandon your title. That is what the Great Mothers dictated. Lauren took in a deep breath. She would be denied the armory, the military, or even access to the royal treasury. Then so it must be. I will find my mother by myself. Lauren. Brisa closed her mouth and looked to her side. Majesty. Do not apologize, Commander. You are doing your duty, and the Queen will honor that when she returns. The Amazons may not be able to help you, but we will give you a promising individual who will aid you. The monk pauses for a moment, looking at what was just written before continuing. And that is how it all began. Lauren is a powerful fighter but lacks healing skills. Your playable character has the specialization class hero that will be very helpful throughout the whole game. Now it is time to choose your character. Select your hero. Click to select Saren, a male human. He has been a slave for his entire life, born from a captured Imperial soldier. Or Eleanor, a female elf. She traded her freedom for protection at a very young age. Although she is cuter, for sure, I'm going to be Saren. Choose your playable character class between the two options above. Warriors have lots of hit points, can wear heavy armor, but move slowly and have limited long-range combat skills. Thieves are very quick and can inflict deadly blows to incapacitated targets, but have fewer hit points and cannot wear heavy armor. Hmm. I think I'm going to be a thief. Thieves are weaker than warriors and usually stay in the back row on the battlefield, though if well-equipped can sustain some damage. Remember that you can use Lauren's guard action to protect any thief or mage positioned in the back row. You want me to travel with a man? She survived the young man more than a bit warily. She surveyed the young man more than a bit warily. Males were not well-received among the Amazons, and their only function was seen to be a means to procreate. We found a lot of talent in him, your majesty. Please hear him out. It is an honor to meet you, princess. <clears throat> he bowed to her deeply. He is the son of our strongest warrior and most loyal slave. He has received their greatness, but has also demonstrated a talent in healing. There is no doubt that he will be a faithful servant. Is that true, man? Speak. Yes, your highness. I have served you and her majesty dutifully at the... Move the mouse over the attributes on the left for a quick help. Um, healer's Quarters, Training Grounds, Royal Palace. Um, Royal Palace. Specifically in the Queen's Service. Gain plus two in skill. You served my mother. How? I do anything she asks of me. I have not seen you around the palace. My mother already has a personal servant, and he is not you. 
Princess, Saren belongs to the Queen's harem. He has proven deep loyalty and obedience. Lauren's eyes grew wide as she took in the man before her. She had never looked at men with hungry eyes before, yet it was not too difficult to see why this one was deemed worthy of her mother's company. Saren was one of the more handsomer slaves she's encountered. He is among the select men available to Her Majesty, if that day were to ever come. For some reason, Lauren was relieved to hear that this man was yet untouched by her mother, and found a mysterious joy in having him serve her instead. Your skills of the bedroom are not of use to me, so do not expect me to share the same duties. Saren smirked, used to people treating him a certain way upon hearing his duty, but... Yes, ma'am. What actual use will you be of to me? Saren could not reveal that his actual service to the queen <clears throat> was far more illicit and that his position in the queen's harem was only a front. Saren was a spy and an assassin. I know my way around a battlefield. For the last several annual proving competitions, I've been sponsored to enter and have won many titles. For this year's proving, I was granted top place in... Ooh. Um, how about the target challenge? Yes, this skill with a bow and arrow rivals that of an Amazon's. More skill. Acquired small crossbow. Very nice. Not only has he demonstrated superior fighting ability, but he is extremely loyal. Tell them. I was allowed the honor of accompanying my mistress to the tavern where she was disrespected by several rude drunkards. They were looking for a fight, so I... Mm. Reasoned with them. I was able to talk the Amazons down from a fight, reminding them that Queen Karen forbids such brawling, sparing my mistress from any bloodshed. Gain two in will... It is true. He respected his mistress deeply, as he will respect you. He did not fail to craft a present for his mistress for the winter solstice. Tell her, what was the last gift you made? I showed my loyalty to her by giving her... Um... I learned to forge weaponry and created a sword just for her, since I would trust no other smith to know my mistress better than I. With my sword, she cut down her enemies easily, bringing her great honor. Gain two in strength. She received the gift very well, and I was praised. I was happy just to give her a small emblem of her great strength and wisdom. Unfortunately, even my mighty mistress was not invincible. She succumbed to a grave illness, and in her last days, she called me to her side. She granted me one reward for my service, and I chose... She granted me her heirloom ring, which was only jewelry to her, but when I placed it on my finger, I felt a great surge in my magical power. Plus two in will, acquired ring of speed... Very cool. And his loyalty does not end there, your highness. Saren has demonstrated an act of a true servant of the Citadel. I was approached by another slave. They spoke of fantastic lands and cities and life away from the Citadel. I associated with this person to the point that he confided in me a plan to escape. He wished for me to come with him, and I... Convinced him not to escape, reported him to authorities, refused but helped to free him. Refused, but helped to free him. You what? This man spoke hatred towards the queen, and since I knew the Amazons did not want such a weakling in their service, I helped to get rid of him. I know in my heart that servants of the Citadel all wish to be here, and I do not like to see someone who doesn't. Gain two in skill. Lauren was silent. It will be a difficult loss to let go of our most prized slave. However, I will trust you with no one less, my princess. Are you happy with your choices, or do you wish to start the creation again? I'm happy. Are you willing to put your life on the line for my cause? Without hesitation. I suppose you will be satisfactory. 
Lauren demanded an immediate departure, as leaving could not be too soon with her mother missing. Chapter 1, The Rescue Please select your game difficulty. Difficulty will affect enemy strength, the impact of elemental resistances, and other aspects of the game. If you've played RPGs before, we recommend the normal difficulty. Probably hard. This is the hardest difficulty levels. Experienced RPG players should try it out. Remember that if you find the game too easy or too, too hard as you play, you can change the difficulty at any time from the preferences screen. Cool. Lauren instructed Saren to take care of any business in the Citadel before they left. You will be able to shop in each town you travel to. At the start, you only have basic equipment and are carrying a few potions. Potions will be very useful in some battles, especially at the hard difficulty level. All items you own will be stored in the party inventory, which you can access anytime by pressing the I key. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and change party setup. Review your party setup before proceeding. Wow, there's a lot of characters. Party limit is six. Um, something like that, I guess. Let's head to the castle. Saren and Lorne walked up to Commander Breeza. You remain, your highness. Have you reconsidered claiming the title of queen? Absolutely not. I am preparing for my journey. I do not know how long I will be gone, but my hope is for not very. Of course. You seem suspiciously eager to forget Queen Karen. How dare you? You are a slave. You speak when you are spoken to. Silence. He is speaking in my interest. I am surprising you too. This is your queen you are dismissing so easily. Do not forget that she will return and will hear of your actions to rescue her. Yes, Majesty. I mean only to enforce Amazon, Amazon traditions, not to dishonor Karen. Queen, Queen Karen. Brisa gulped and corrected herself, shooting a sharp look towards Saren. Moments earlier, Brisa had been singing his praises, but now there was an uncomfortable air between them. Hmm. Shop. Okay, we have a hundred gold. Amazon Citadel specialized in blades, spears, and light medium armor. Um. Wow, there's a lot of gear. A lot that we cannot afford right now. Light explosive bomb. Does 50 HP to a damage of damage to a full row of enemy usable by thief. Scroll of major healing. Restoration, haste, confusion. Hmm. Uh, haste, healing. Let's see, we have a fine crossbow, a ring of speed, which gives five speed, three potions of minor vitality. Restores 30 points of targeted allies' stamina spell points. Restores 50 of targeted allies' HP. We have three of them. Two medium vitalities. Restores 60 of targets, target targeted allies' stamina spell points. And two potions of medium healing. Restores 100 of target targets, bleh, targeted allies' HP. Okay, so let's go ahead and equip. Oh. Wait a minute. Inventory slots. Each character can have two predefined weapons setups in battle. You can switch between them using the switch weapon action. You can see statistics and party inf and information about the currently selected party member in this panel. Clicking on this bag will show the party shared inventory. This bag. You can click on the four smaller icons to show weapons, armors, jewelry, usable items, and other items. Items with a green background can be used by the selected character, while those with red cannot. You can quickly access the inventory by pressing the I key. Clicking on the big icon in the middle shows the skills. You can then click on the two icons above to toggle between class and specialization skills. To examine each skill, simply move the mouse over them. You can quickly access the inventory pressing the S key. 
not the inventory, but the skills. Clicking on the book icon on the, right, on the right will show the quest screen. Click on a quest on the left page to view the description on the right page of the book. Clicking the orange question mark shows the active quests. While clicking on the green exclamation part point will show the completed ones. You can quickly access this with the Q key. Okay, so you have two swords. You have a tempered longsword, medium edged weapon, 14 damage, 1 attack, 2% critical, standard short sword, 8 damage, 1% critical, speed minus 1. She's got fine boots, 3 defense, chain leggings, 4 defense, speed minus 1, and threshold. I don't know what threshold means. Of 2. Whoops. She's got leather bracers, 4 defense, 1 threshold. Fine chainmail, 17 defense, minus 4 speed, 3 threshold. Leather shawl, light armor, 3 defense. And a plate helmet, 13 defense, minus 2 speed, 2 threshold. General. The character can become more or less resistant to specific kind of attacks based on the gear worn. The icons listed to the right of each category show the character's resistances to those specific attack types. Immune means complete immunity. Resist means taking about 50% less damage. Weak means taking about 50% more damage. And critical means taking lots of damage if hit by that specific attack type. Battle stats. Attack is the amount of damage the character will do. Defense is how good the character is at defending, reducing damage. Magic is a mage-only statistic and measures spells' effectiveness. Speed is crucial in determining the movement order during the battles. Critical hit measures the chances and percentage of the character inflicting a particularly powerful attack. Stagger threshold measures the character's resistance to enemy attacks before becoming staggered. Slower and vulnerable to combo attacks. That makes sense. So that's what threshold is. This panel shows the character's attributes. Strength is the primary attribute of warriors, but influences the HP of all classes. Skill is the primary attribute of thieves, but influences the speed and defense value of all classes. Will is the primary attribute of mages, but influences the sp spell or skill points and magic resistance of all classes. Hmm. <clears throat> On this panel, you see the general information about the selected party member, class, level, experience, actual maximum hit points, actual maximum stamina, spell points. The base class can be one of the following, a warrior, a thief, or mage. The specialization class is unique for each member of the party. You can read more about classes and skill trees in the skill panel, which you can access by clicking on the war axe icon on the top right of this screen. The bar below the class's name is the experience bar and shows how close the character is to leveling up. She's level 1 and she's a blade master. Okay, so let's head back to this screen and... Um... The war axe. This thing? Blade master. We'll get into this when we actually have points to spend. Warriors fight using mainly their strength and dexterity, able to wear the heaviest armors and wield the heaviest weapons. They are, however, unable to use any magic and lack the flexibility of the thieves. Warriors can specialize in various secondary disciplines, which can improve either their attacks or their defenses. And Blade Masters are warriors who rely purely on offense. They gladly give up using shields in the offhand to wield one sword in each hand. Being a Blade Master requires much training, however, and only a few warriors in the whole of Aravorn are blessed with this title. Naturally born leaders, Blade Masters have a variety of skills able to defeat their enemies. And we have Thief. Thieves are a deadly class when used together with mages. They are average fighters, and while someone... And while some can cast some magic, they are not as powerful as mages. However, they are masters of incapacitating opponents and taking advantage of any existing target's conditions. In fact, all thieves' specialization skills take advantage of an existing condition to deliver an often deadly blow to the enemy. And Hero is a unique specialization class. It's extremely rare to find people able to cast the Hero line spells. All the Hero's spells are aimed to protect, heal, and empower their allies. 
Thus, it is natural that they are highly sought after by everyone in the realm, since they are among the most valuable members of any party. Let's look at our stats. 114 HP, 48 spell points. No, nothing there. 17 attack, 43 magic, 35 defense. We're faster than Lorne. Same critical hit and only 10 threshold. All right, we're wearing leather bracers, leather armor, 11 defense, minus one speed, one threshold, leather shawl, and a padded cap for six defense, one threshold. Um, short sword, damage type normal. I'm not sure what that means. That looks like bludgeoning, but that can't be right. Meaning, they can't mean bludgeoning. Must mean striking or something. 10 damage, 1% critical hit, and a short bow. 10 damage, 2% critical hit, minus 4 speed. This would give plus 5 damage at minus 1% critical and plus 1 speed. Let's put that on. And how do we switch weapon types? I don't remember how we did that. Hmm. Let's go ahead and put the ring of speed on. Okay, very good. And the quests. Find the missing Amazon queen. Let's go ahead and right click and save game. Very good, we're 23 minutes in. Or no, that's the time. It's 11.29 here. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and close and let's do some vendor's offer of 20. Uh, no, I might give that to Lauren. Yeah, we'll see about that. Let's see, is there anything we can afford? Standard longsword. That'd be an upgrade for you, but... I don't think you can use that from the back row. You use the long sword. Standard broadsword. I kind of like that. Discount of two. Second tier discount. Um, standard curved dagger. Nice critical hit, but way too much. Way too weak of damage. Steel dagger. Um, 180. I'm just looking at price right now. Magic Vest of Zion. Some very cool stuff. Chain pauldrons. Um, chain boots. Studded shoulder pads. Chain coif, cloth cap, vest. Hmm. So what does she actually have? This is a waist, neck, ring, ring. Okay. Um. Can't afford that. Leather shoulder pads. That's just a straight up upgrade. Quit directly. For the leather shawl. Saw that. Um. Hmm. 
now let's see if we can get something for me. Reinforced cat. Leather shoulder pads would be a nice upgrade for me as well. Saw the shawl. We have 48 left. Uh, we have medium healing and minor healing. Uh, just to be safe. I guess we'll get one more potion of minor healing. And we're done. Whoops. Uh, leave shop, castle. All right, let's go ahead and save. And leave. Review your party setup before proceeding. That looks about right. Upon seeing Saren approach the front gates, Lauren demanded an immediate departure. They would leave the security of the Citadel and cross the plains of Erevorn to search for her mother, no matter how long it took to find her. The first place to visit was the town of Grimoire in the Human Empire. Saren's first goal was to reach the city of Grimoire, the capital of the Human Empire, but it was a dangerous road plagued by goblins and bandits. When they arrived, however, they would be able to begin their investigation. New quest, travel to Grimoire. Travel to the nearby human empire's town of Grimoire. Lauren and her ally were walking down a road in the middle of the plains en route to the town of Grimoire. Even though Lauren was quiet, Saren knew what, that she was thinking only of saving her mother. The only clue we have is that my mother's guards have disappeared as well. If we find them, then we find my mother. That is a good plan, your highness. The relationship was as one might expect between a servant and royalty. Saren quietly followed the princess and would only praise and agree with her when given the chance to speak. He was used to being less formal, but then he never had served royalty before. Lauren noticed nothing about this behavior because she was quite used to it. <coughs> this is the only way out from the citadel. So the queen must have passed by here. It would be very helpful if there were any witnesses to unusual activity. But, your highness, may I ask a question? Lauren glanced at him with a frown. This was the first time he had dared, dared to speak out of turn. If you must, but I cannot promise that I will answer. Why aren't we using a griffin to travel now? They're faster than walking and much safer. You fool, aren't you aware of the laws of my people? Saren took a step back, fearful for his life. For the most part, yes. My choice to leave the Citadel took away my privileges. The Griffins are not allowed to me. Couldn't you change the laws? As queen, but I am not queen. My mother is. I see. I'm sorry that I asked, your highness. Now you know. Don't forget it. I guarantee that I shall not, your highness. They traveled mostly quiet through the day until it faded to night. The land ran flat with sparse boulders along the path. This looks like a good place to camp. Lauren, however, did not stop walking and continued on without a word. Your Highness? Keep up. Saren sprang up from the ground where he was about to start a fire and hurried after her. Lauren seemed prepared to travel a lot further that night. Saren steeled himself for a very long walk, but he found it more and more difficult to keep his position behind Lauren. She was beginning to walk much slower. Lauren's feet were dragging against the ground rather than proudly stomping ahead like earlier in the day. Saren knew that Princess Lauren was tired. We should stop for the night and make camp. My mother is out there waiting for someone to save her. That someone is me. Lauren was not going to stop even for a moment until Queen Karen was recovered. It was now Saren's job to keep her from sabotaging herself with her own determination. <clears throat> um, hmm. Definitely not forceful. Um, 
friendly. You will be of no use to your mother running on no sleep. Lauren halted and spun around. What did you say to me? Saren knew then that his life was over. He was too used to speaking freely with his previous mistress and his tongue had gotten away from him. I am sorry, princess. What I meant to say is that I am too exhausted to continue. Lauren shifted her weight and put her hands on her hips. You? I am used to hard labor, but I was always granted rest at night by the grace of your highnesses. Lauren evaluated him, though only superficially. Deep down, she was more tired than Saren. I had thought you stronger than this. Lauren pushed past him and into the bushy grass. She sat down cross-legged, her back straight and her arms resting on each knee, just like Amazon royalty. Lie down, man. I will give you only a few hours. Do not waste them. Getting Lauren to stop was enough for Saren, and he decided not to waste his mistress's generosity. He promptly walked over and laid in the grass next to her, but not too close. Saren woke a few hours later to Lauren calling him. He did not see Lauren sleep a wink. <clears throat> However, Lauren's speed and alertness had improved, letting him know that she might have rested after all. I have seen no population since we left. I was told the Grimoire settlement was on this route. Where is it? Is it past that mountain? Which mountain, mistress? You see, before us. You've instructed me to walk straight for it. Princess, that is not a mountain. It is the city of Grimoire. Lauren stopped once again to turn to her servant. That is not a city. It is too large. It is a large walled city, like the Citadel. Amazons? Lauren reached for her sword, bristling at the thought of competing of a competing tribe so close to her home. No, Grimoire is the capital of the Empire, the nation of men. Please put away your sword. We are not to make war with them. Lauren looked at her blade, frowned, and slid it back into its sheath. Others can build cities as great as the Citadel? Are you sure of what you speak? Yes, castles can be constructed by any nation with the proper materials. You didn't know that. Lauren winced from the insinuation that she was not well-educated. I know that the Amazons are superior to all other nations, so the Citadel is superior to all other castles. Yes, Your Grace. <laughs> Saren learned just how sheltered Lauren truly was. Even his former mistress knew all about the outside world, but then she was allowed to travel outside of the Citadel's walls. Lauren was not. He knew then that he would have to take better care of his princess than he had anticipated. You are now being taken to the world map. Locations will appear as they're discovered in the storyline. Cool, world map. Sometimes when you travel to a city, you will encounter a random battle. These battles are optional, unlike the battles that are triggered by the storyline. You can also access the camp button on the map. <clears throat> <clears throat> it will take you to your group's campsite, so you may speak with your party members. Getting to know each character is important to the game, and may even lead to romance. See what you can find. Hmm. Um. I don't understand what this is. Names. Just the map. Um. What's the difference between these? I don't get it. More clouds. Less clouds. I guess we hate Grimoire. As they approached Grimoire, the path cut through a wooded area. Lauren stopped abruptly and held her arm out to stop Saren. Her expression was serious and her voice low. Something isn't right here. They looked around, examining the area for anything out of the ordinary, and then they saw it. Someone was strung up by their feet from a tree limb, head down, with a bag covering their body. The bag writhed. They were still alive. Please help me! Lauren and Saren rushed toward the person, but several little screeching creatures sprang down from the tree. Goblins. Fear shot through Saren as he realized that a battle was now upon them, and that Princess Lauren had never fought outside of training. It was up to him to protect the princess. Watch yourself. Same to you. Lauren drew her two swords swiftly and hurried to engage the enemies. You do not have to give me any instruction. 
Saren was surprised to see how swiftly Lauren moved as she fought. She started with a vertical slash that moved so quickly that her blade looked like a solid her blade looked like a solid arc of silver. The goblin collapsed to the ground in a bloody mess as she lifted her other sword in a horizontal slash to behead another goblin. She danced between the enemies and evaded their attempts and counteract with counterattacked with ease. Saren looked surprised to see how beautifully deadly all of her movements were. Lauren impaled another goblin through the heart in one quick stab, retracting her blade and flicking the blood off the metal with casual ease. She didn't have to stop to catch her breath, nor did she break a sweat in the short battle. You are about to select your party formation. Right now you only have two party members, but later in the game you can have up to six. Okay, that seems about right. Prepare yourself for the first fight. Welcome to the battle screen. <laughs> Attack by clicking on enemy portraits or click ally portraits for friendly actions. Hover over the portraits to see detailed information on the left panel. To repeat the last action performed, simply click twice on the portrait. Click on the quick help button in the bottom right for a full tutorial. Alright, so it is my turn. Um... It's not showing me. Goblin thief, goblin thief, goblin warrior. Um, I can do an aimed shot. Wait, that's red though. I don't think I can do that. Oh, 18 to 21. <laughs> <clears throat> Slower long range attack with increased accuracy hits for 150% base damage but takes longer to move again. Yeah, let's do that. Boom. Okay, Lauren. Um Staggered. Reduces target's attribute values depending on difficulty level and exposes him to advanced attacks available to warriors and thieves. can't do anything to him, but we can attack here. Melee attack, basic attack with a melee weapon. She acts again. Uh, melee. Dang, she's taking some damage. She's staggered. Um, let's go ahead and aim shot. Killed. And killed. Um, aim shot. Six. It's not really taking any stamina, I guess. I don't know. Pretty fun combat, though. gold, 64 XP, each of us with two kills, cool. Saren hurried to keep up with her, but the fight was over quickly. Lauren kept her swords in hand as she approached the stranger and cut the restraining rope. Saren grimaced, but found some amusement as Lauren's obvious lack of concern for the person. The person tumbled down from the tree, groaned, and then squirmed out of the bag covering him. A lithe, blonde man stood up and brushed the dirt from himself. Draco. Ow, the ground. Hurts quite a bit, actually. Who are you? Even though the man's ears were tucked neatly behind his hair, Saren noticed them sticking out from his disturbed locks. They were pointed. His ears. Or his ears. Are you an elf? Oh, you can tell. He cleared his throat and smiled. <clears> throat> Elf on my mother's side, yes. 
He bowed deeply and with unnecessary flourish. Lady and gentlemen, I am Draco, fire starter. And yes, I do start fires. You start fires? Enough of your nonsense. Lauren waved her weapons as if he were as much of a threat as the goblins. Was it simply because he was a man? Or had her isolation at the Citadel turned her paranoid? No, no, don't get upset. I'm just playing around. Identify yourself now. Can I save right now? I can. So you can actually save anywhere. Let's see how long we've been playing. Um, 45 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and save here. And um, we'll even do a backup save just in case. I want to thank you guys for joining me. I do hope you enjoyed this episode. And I hope you'll join me on... Um, future episodes and join me on this journey i really wanted to play this because of uh it being such yeah it loads you right to that spot very cool but because it's such a kind of traditional type of rpg but with some twists and stuff it has all the fixings and really what i'm into right now so i hope you join me for this journey i'd love to have you guys so stay tuned i'll see you in the next one much love peace and joy as always take care and uh yeah hopefully see you guys in the next one peace out